So I want to tell you a little story about something interesting that happened to me. So I'm going to transition a little bit and say that that story of the Dalba Vance in clinical trial, I'm going to return to that in a little bit and to the story of Jackson. But I want to leave you hanging to say that I was trying something new. I was trying to bring a new antibiotic to patients. And I found that enrolling them was really tricky because I was very good at getting consent, but I didn't always know if I was getting informed consent. And I was under tremendous pressure to enroll a lot of patients because there's strength in numbers. The more patients I could enroll, the more people I could experiment on, the more information I could gather. And that was a very difficult but interesting position to be in. And so while I was doing this trial, something really interesting happened. I mentioned that I am the yeast infection guy at my hospital. And shortly after I started my trial, I started seeing patients who had a very scary superbug infection that was a yeast infection called Candida auris. Has anyone ever heard of that? Candida auris, the epicenter of this worldwide outbreak, is New York. So this brings me to point three, which is you should know about Candida auris. And I'll spell it if anyone's taking notes. Candida is C-A-N-D-I-D-A, -D -D Candida. Auris, A-U-R-I-S, it's for oracle, the part of the ear where it was discovered in a woman in Japan in 2008. So what happened was in 2008, this random yeast appeared in the ear of a woman, and we found that it was resistant to all three major classes of antifungal drugs. There were no treatments for it. 50% of the people who got it died. 50% lived, barely. And I've just spent the last 20, 30 minutes laying out for you why it's so difficult to get the pharmaceutical industry to make an antibiotic, to make something to treat bacterial infections. Well, if you think it's difficult to convince them to make one for a bacterium, how hard do you think it is for them to make an antibiotic or an antifungal drug for an obscure yeast infection? Very difficult. So we started writing these articles about Candida auris and the fact that we desperately needed new treatments. And my hospital became a referral center. People got shipped in to see me from all over the world who were desperate. And we cured most of them, actually. And then in July of 2018, I got a call from a Pulitzer Prize winning journalist from the New York Times. And he said, Dr. McCarthy, I hear that you have been treating patients with Candida auris. And I said, well, yes, I have. And he said, I heard that a number of them survived. I said, I, that's true. And he said, I'm writing an article, in fact, a series of articles about Candida auris, and I'd like to talk to some of these patients. And I said, well, you know that I, there's something called HIPAA, patient privacy laws. I can't give you their contact information. But this was a savvy journalist, and he said, no, no. I'm not asking for their contact. Why don't you give them my contact? Put the ball in their court. If they want to talk, they can. If not, no big deal. Well, what do you think about that? I wasn't sure. He was correct. It wasn't against the law for me to pass along their contact info. But I also thought back to who these patients were and what they had gone through in my hospital. One of the men was a guy who ended up having 15 surgical procedures because we couldn't treat the, the candida auris with a drug, we had to cut the darn thing out. And we kept being unable to get all of it. And so procedure after procedure, this guy went through a very difficult time. He had a two-year-old child. He wanted, the kid, he wanted to see his kid, and we said, you can't bring the kid in, it's too risky. And so I decided not to give my patients this journalist's contact info. I think you could debate whether that was right or wrong. I'm still not sure. But something interesting happened, which was... Eight months later, on April 9th of 2019, there was a front page article in the New York Times about Candida auris. And the headline was, Mystery Fungus Spreads Around the Globe Amidst a Climate of Secrecy. And that secrecy was because of doctors like me who didn't give them access to patients. And 
you can read that quote, uh, that article, and I'm quoted in it. I gave a very long quote about how the doctors and residents and nurses at my hospital are so good that when a patient comes in in the middle of the night with candida auris, that by the time I come in the next morning at 7 a.m. for rounds, there's very little for me to add. They've done so much, ex executed things so well, that I'm often left wondering if I should even examine the patient. What little am I going to bring to this? In fact, the only thing I could be doing is potentially picking up that superbug and bringing it to other patients, so I'm not even sure I want to do that. Well, that quote got truncated to say that a fungal expert's not sure he even wants to examine these patients. And so then two things happened after that article went live because it established me as one of the experts on this new superbug. So I got a call from Good Morning America. And they asked if I wanted to come on and talk about Candida auris. And I said I would love to. I've spent my career designing diagnoses, diagnostic tests and new treatments, and we've come up with a way to save lives. I would love to talk about it. Then I got a second phone call from my hospital's PR department, and they said, we are going to politely decline this interview request on your behalf. And I said, can you do that? And they said, we already did. And I said, well, why? And this is again in April of last year. I said, now, why would you want to do that? This is shedding light on a really important public health topic. I'm not some wacko. I'm going to talk about the evidence and the facts and how we're saving lives. This will reflect, I think, in a, in a good way uh, about on the hospital. And they said, well, Dr. McCarthy, we appreciate where you're coming from, but ultimately, we don't want our hospital associated with superbugs. And I said, well, I have some very bad news. I have a book coming out in three weeks called Superbugs. And it's about our hospital. Uh, and I've been trying to get it in the hands of the PR department for nine months because I tell the story of one of my family members who got a superbug and how he was treated at our hospital and the wonderful story of how a team came together to save him. And they said, <laughs> what? <laughs> you have a book on superbugs? And what they did was they ended up putting me through something called media training which is that they hired an investigative journalist, they put a camera on me, and they got a bunch of the front office brass to come and watch me answer questions about superbugs, grilling me as though I, could, I was a, a loose cannon that might say something that makes their hospital look bad. And I'll give you an example. Earlier in this uh, talk, I said to you all that when I go home at night, I'm not worried I'm going to transmit a superbug to my two young children. When I said that, they freaked out. And they said, no, no, you don't want to say not worried. You want to say, I am confident that I will not transmit this to others. And that was the level of wording that they were concerned about. And at the time, I thought that that was a misguided. And in fact, I wrote an op-ed in response to my hospital's PR. I wrote an op-ed in the New York Times. And the first line of it was, hospitals are losing an important PR battle because their policy, which is one that remains today, is no comment. And what you will see is that there have been a number of articles that have since come out about Candida auris, about people dying, and the families will say, we want the hospital to talk about what happened so that this doesn't get spread to other people, so that we can increase awareness. And the hospitals time and again say, no comment. And I wrote, no comment is no longer acceptable. And it was a very fine line to walk because I like my job. I really like my job. Uh, but I was not okay with this approach. And it, I think, speaks to the fact that we as uh, doctors and as the scientific community are really struggling with how to talk about this issue. And that's the reason I'm here today, is because I want to talk about this issue. I don't want you to be fearful of it. I walk into a hospital every day. There may be superbugs in this room. That doesn't mean they're going to kill you. And part of that is understanding why. And the other part that I highlighted in this op-ed that I wrote is I acknowledge something that the New York Times was trying to do. They want hospitals to publicly report every superbug that's found within their walls. The idea being that this is a public health issue and that you deserve to know. There is an argument for why that's the case, but what I pointed out is that without context, this means nothing. 
a long list of Latin names is going to look basically like the terms and conditions for your iPhone. You're not going to know what to make of it because I wouldn't know what to make of it. If you swab the inside of my nose, there could be superbugs in there. What does that tell you? It doesn't tell you anything. It also doesn't tell you anything if I have a patient with a superbug infection, if you list that publicly, it doesn't tell you if I cured them or if I didn't cure them. And so what I pointed out was that the best hospitals are going to see more superbugs. Why would that be? It's because we have the most sophisticated diagnostic techniques that can detect these things. We have the most powerful antibiotics. We have the experts who know how to treat them. And we also take on the cases that appear lost. And you're going to disincentivize us doing that, us taking on those difficult cases, if you think that that's going to be publicly reported and somehow hurt our institution's credibility. But as this story has unfolded, I've come to appreciate where my hospital's PR department is coming from. I have friends who work for the New York State Department of Health, and they say that they routinely get phone calls from people who say something to the effect of, I'm about to put my mother in a nursing home and I want to know if it has superbugs or not. So people are concerned, and it could hurt a place's image. And so we're trying to figure out what the right thing to do here is. But I'll tell you, in November, the New York Times got their way, and hospitals in New York, the only state in the country, now all report which ones have candida auris. You can go on in line and see if Melville, I don't know what the nearest hospital is from here, but you'll be able to see whether it's had this fungus. It also doesn't tell you anything about the patients, but it tells you whether it's had it or not. 